This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly. This episode of Know How is brought to you by Lighthouse. Lighthouse is the only security camera powered by the same technology that's in self driving cars. Visit www.light.house slash twit to sign up for 15% off Lighthouse when they ship and a chance to win a free Lighthouse plus a year of service. See site for contest rules. And by Joby. Joby's Gorillapod is the signature flexible tripod amongst leading photographers and journalists. Currently, Joby is transitioning to a new production center and isn't accepting orders. However, leave your email with them for an update on product availability and when they're back, receive 15% off your first order. Go to joby.com and enter TWIT at checkout. Today on Know How, Scully 2.0 plus mixed reality in Windows. What are you doing? Virtual pre-simulator. Is that my cue? Yeah, that was your cue. Welcome to Know How. It's a Twitch show where we build, bend, break, and upgrade. I am Father Robert Ballasare. And I am Mother Megan Maroney. And for the next couple of minutes, we're going to be opening up the virtual brain to put in the virtual information so you can do real world stuff. Mm-hmm. I think I'm, that's I'm right. excited. Yeah. I thought we were going to get to finish Scully. Oh, we will. Oh, we'll, we'll definitely get to get to Scully, but we had a special treat. Now, Megan, you may have heard this last week, Microsoft dropped on Tuesday the Fall Creators Update. One of the things that came along with the Falls Creator update was this idea of mixed reality, which the rest of the world calls VR. Slightly different, but it's the same idea. You take some hardware, you use your computer to generate a 3D world, and Microsoft has something that they said it would, would blow us away, would be very different. I've only had a couple of minutes to play with this because it took forever for me to get the laptop upgraded, and unfortunately I've been on jury duty this whole week, but I got to say, it's pretty amazing. Have you heard much about the the mixed reality idea? I've heard just a a small part, but what I don't understand is I thought mixed reality was just a marketing term for augmented reality because augmented reality sounded too technical. Right. I I went to a Microsoft seminar at one of the Microsoft technology centers here in the peninsula, and the way that they explained it is that there are different shades of VR slash AR. On the one side, you've got the HoloLens. The HoloLens is pure AR. In other words, I see the real world, and then I overlay digital elements on the real world. On the other side, you have something like the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive, which are entirely virtual reality. You create a landscape out of the virtual world, and that's all it is. In the middle, Microsoft has created this mixed reality idea, which is it's, it's mainly VR. It looks a lot like VR, except they're taking elements out of the real world, and then they're adding digital elements to it. So it's not a HoloLens. It's not AR, but it's not quite pure VR. Now, the big thing, and actually this goes back to last week with the Oculus Connect 4, they are pitching this not as a gaming system. To be, to be honest, you can use it as a gaming system. In fact, this is a great gaming system. However, Microsoft sees this as more of a platform. It's, it's, it's a way for you to interact with your applications and your services like you haven't before. Excellent. Um, but it is VR in the sense that you're not seeing any of the real world. Because when you were playing with that, I was sticking my tongue out at you right. and you could not see me. I could not see, right. So I don't, I don't have any view of the outside world that's not brought in. But the way that they're pitching this is, this is not just a dev kit. This is a way for me to create immersive worlds where, for example, I am testing out the newest Audi. Uh, you know, it's the same presentation that, Ocul- that Oculus gave. And Mark Zuckerberg, in his presentation, he was really pushing this idea that this is not about games. In fact, if you look through the keynote, I think he only mentioned gaming once, and it was like 10 seconds. It was just in passing. They're really pushing this idea that VR is not just for messing around. You can do some productive things. Now, we can't show you because this is a first look, but I've been playing around with this, this Acer mixed reality headset. The, uh, these were just released on Tuesday. I got mine on Tuesday, unfortunately jury duty, but it's amazing. Microsoft has really done something cool. Imagine all of your apps and all of your services inside of a virtual space, a house. And in that virtual space, just by using these little controllers, you have the ability to sort of kick off the different apps. So I can have my uh, my media is playing over here, and I've got a website up over here, and I've got a Skype call over here, and I can arrange the windows the way that I want. It's it's real, I mean, it's hard to explain, because it just sounds like, oh, so multiple monitors and virtual reality? Well, yes. 
but they've actually pulled it off. It doesn't feel cheesy. It feels kind of fun, actually. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is here, go ahead and put these on. Okay. I'm going to loosen this up. So uh, this, this is the headset. We'll go through the specs in just a bit, but uh, this is the tighten and loosen knob. So I'm going to make it all the way loose. You want to put this onto your head like that and then tighten it up in the back until it's, it's nice and secure. Okay. Okay, and so what you're seeing now, this is the uh, the Whoa. Acer, the AH101D8EY. It's the Windows Mixed Reality Headset. This is going to come with two wireless controllers. Here, I, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and put here. There Thank you go. You. There's one, and there's the other, you. and then you can actually see those inside the headset. Yes. Now, the environment that you're in, and again, I'm sorry, audience, we can't show you. This is just a first look, but we will show you in the full review. You have the ability to move inside this house. Can I shoot things? Yeah. It, so, you, like, over on the 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 window to your right, you've got Skype, so you could start Skype calls. The window to your left, you've got Internet Explorer or uh, Edge, so you could you could kick off. Uh, in fact, I think right now there's probably Twitch playing because I've got the live stream on. Well, no, actually, it's just this platform and the ocean. Oh, that's right. No, I, I brought you upstairs. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, if you, you brought me upstairs. Uh, yeah. If you if that you use creepy. these sticks, these sticks right there okay. will teleport you around. Now, let me explain what this is. The reason why this is important is because. This is what's called an inside out. They call it world VR, but the sensors to detect where you are and where the controllers are are not built into sensors that you put Whoa. outside, which you find in the Oculus and the HTC Vive. Instead, oh the sensors are mounted on the headset. So this is a self-contained unit. This is what Oculus is working on with Project Santa Cruz, except this is actually better because I've tried Project Santa Cruz. The display on this is better. Did you just fall? No, I just moved quickly. <laughs> Teleporting, I think is what you called it. Yeah. The other cool thing about this is, and I don't understand why other manufacturers haven't done this. I'm going to do this real quick, Megan. Yes. If you ever wanted to jump out of VR really quickly with any of the other VR headsets, you have to take them off. They actually added a hinge. Oh, that's so nice. You can see and then yeah. just drop it back down. Got it. Sorry about that. It just messed up your hair. That, yeah, you really did. Yeah, it's my, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, let, let's 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 go over the specs. Okay. So we've got six degrees of freedom. You've got roll, pitch, yaw, plus forward and back, up, down. Uh, you've got uh, it's about 1.35 pounds. This is surprisingly light. <laughs> You're okay now. There I shouldn't be anything attacking you. Skype was attacking me. Oh, Skype was attacking you. Okay. <laughs> uh, you've got a hundred degree field of view, so it's it's actually wider than what you get with the Oculus Rift. Proximity sensor, gyroscope, accelerometer, magnetometer. You've got two. Uh, controllers, and these controllers are fantastic. Both touch pads, joysticks, multiple buttons. Yeah, just make it as comfortable as you can. Yeah, it was falling off a little bit. There yeah, uh, tracking camera, Bluetooth sync, spatial audio. This thing is loaded for bear. This is essentially what Oculus wanted to do with their Project Santa Cruz. And here's the thing. This is the same price as the Oculus Rift right now. They dropped the Oculus Rift down to $399. That's where this starts. And I would argue this is far far better of a headset, and this is designed to work with the Windows experience, with the Fall Creators update. Now, this is a rudimentary model that Megan's playing with right now, but I got to tell you folks, I, I love it. I, I mean, I've only been able to play with this for about half an hour, but they did this one right. I get really dizzy when I'm doing VR, and I was okay using yeah, this. Yeah, I, I also get really dizzy. I mean, because women tend to sometimes get more dizzy than men, and I always do, and I'm not at all dizzy. Yeah. It, I this is $400? Yeah, 400 bucks. It's a two point, dual 2.89 inch screens, 1440 by 1440 each, so it gives you a 2880 by 1440 screen um, with a 90 hertz refresh. And that, that refresh is important, because the faster you refresh, the less likely you are to get motion sick. Uh, it's also 706 dots per inch, so it's a much higher resolution monitor than you get with some of the other competing headsets, even though those, those are more expensive. But again, for me, for my money, the big thing is the inside-out tracking. Because they've built all the sensors into the headset, it means I can walk into any space, and without having to set it up, I'm golden. I can walk into a coffee shop, start up Windows, and have an office all around me. Oh, that would look weird, and yeah. someone would probably spill their coffee on me, but... That's still pretty cool. I could talk to Cortana on this. Oh yeah, exactly. Hello, yeah. Cortana. I, I didn't hook up the headphones because uh, I, I didn't want to, but it also responds to audio control. So I could I could activate Cortana and say, can you start up Skype? Or can you start the Twitch stream? Or can you check my email? And it would just pop up in front of you. It's just like a screen's floating in space. I can do a recording. I can record my screen. <laughs> yeah. I'm recording right now, so we can you can actually maybe see this someday. Yeah. Oh, unfortunately, again, as we mentioned, we've only had a couple of minutes to play with this, so we can't show you. Uh, we wanted to give you a first look, uh, but 
from its first impressions, this is a really, really good headset. Here, let me help you take that off. So it's oh, I'm just going to wear it around like you wear with your, like this for the rest of the show. Yeah, I got to say, you look Very pretty cool stylish. like that. Yeah. You know, you could do an entire cross-country meet like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, I love this. It, it, and for $400, seriously, that's, that is a great price. Now, they also sent us this. Now, this is what's actually running it. You do need a little beefy processor if you want to do anything of substance. Mm -hmm. uh, you can use a, a, a lower end computer if all you want to do is use it as a sort of a monitor. But this is the Acer Aspire 7. Uh, and I got to say, this one's nice. This is a, a sub $900 computer. You're talking about a 7th gen Intel. This is a quad core i7, not a dual core i7 like you get with a lot, but a quad core. 8 gigabytes of DDR4 expandable to 32 gigabytes, a 256 gigabyte Intel PCIe SSD, 15.6 inch full HD, that's 1920 by 1080 LCD. NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 with two gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, which is enough to run the mixed reality world, uh, as well as, what, like three USB ports. Uh, you've got USB-C, which also includes all of the alternate modes. Uh, you've got a seven-hour battery. The whole thing weighs about five pounds. If you combine this with this, you actually have a self-contained VR unit. No more walking around with a desktop. And I love that. I mean, this this technology is finally coming mature. I remember we had the very first Oculus Rift. It was nice, but it required a high-end PC that we had to build. It was expensive, it was heavy. It was heavy, yeah. It was heavy. I mean, this is nothing. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is literally something that I can carry around in my backpack, set it up, and be running without plugging into anything. I, I like this. I don't know, I don't know Megan. I, I was, they sent me these things, and I was like, okay, I'll check them out, but I'm not really big into VR. I'm much more into AR. I, I like it. I, I like what they're doing with it. Well, I think it's a promise of something bigger. I think we've heard a lot of people yeah. talking about ubiquitous computing. Yeah. And I think that's sort of what it is. Like just everything, you're sitting in your kitchen and you have your windows, you know, you don't have the headset anymore. You're able to just do your minority report, like check your email, cook a little bit, you know, respond to people. Like everything's just around you, whether you're using your voice or a hologram in the air. This is what that, you know, the future of that. No one expects you to be wearing that headset, right. um, you know, 10, 15 years from now. Yeah, and, and honestly, you couldn't wear this headset through a work day. It, it would be uncomfortable, it would be hot, and, and at some point you'd go, well, why don't I just look at my monitors? Mm -hmm. But it's the first time where I felt as if there actually is a productive use case for VR. Most of the time VR has been, oh, look at me, it's a technology demonstrator. I could see this being a wonderful place for you to set up a showcase with all the screens that you need, like a, a teleconferencing, putting this thing on and having a, an in-person teleconference with multiple parties over Skype, because again, that's built into the Microsoft mixed reality uh, viewpoint, um, and then taking advantage of the Microsoft ecosystem. In fact, I saw a demonstration of this at the Microsoft Technology Center. Because Microsoft Skype does real-time translation, I could have five different people around a table speaking five different languages, and it does instantaneous translation. All the graphics would pop up as if they are in front of everyone. You, there's never a bad seat. I'm like, whoa, you know what? Okay, that's better. That's not just a gimmick, that's better. Uh, you know, object, uh, ob objectively better. Mm -hmm. Now, did you feel like it was squeezing your nose a little bit? Uh, no, but that's because I said it for my bridge, and uh, I, I probably oh, should have Oh, okay, because yeah. I mean, I have a prominent nose, so maybe it's just me, but yeah. you, yours is not as prominent it's as mine. It's not, but you, you will notice I'm sweating a little bit because, yeah, um, yeah uh, the, it's got that foam thing. It actually is quite comfortable. They're using this. Uh, this the first time I ever saw this was on the Microsoft HoloLens. Uh, this, uh, this was also used by Sony's uh, PlayStation VR. Uh, this is a really good mechanism. Mm -hmm. the, the HD Vive has sort of like a spandex thing going on. The, uh, the Oculus Rift is not comfortable at all. This, once you fasten it onto your head, because I have the ability to notch this out of the way, um, it can sit on your forehead the entire time. But it, you will collect a little heat. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. We're going to take a look at this next week. We're going to have Jason Howell. He actually wants to play games. Uh, and hopefully by that time, we'll figure it out how to show you what the experience looks like on the inside. But I got to say, Microsoft, Acer, you did your homework. And this is actually really, really good, especially at that price point. So uh, there's that. Well, I, I figured out how to record something in there. I pressed a record button. So maybe that's how you share it. It's, it's probably what we're going to end up doing. I'm, I'm, uh, actually, one of the things about the, the mixed reality experience is they've given you a way to show people 
what you're experiencing. So it's not just a geek with a headset on, they'll actually see what you see, um, through not through your eyes, but like through a, through a third person perspective. That's cool. I want to find out how to do that. I think that's why part of the reason AR has spread yeah. faster because you can share it. Like we have, I have the that curious scope oh, right, right, right. that had sharks in the studio, and I had the sharks, and because I could share it on Twitter, it wasn't really, you know, it's just sharks in your environment. It wasn't that amazing, but you can share it, and then suddenly everyone's like, "What's this? I want to try that." Yeah. With VR, it's harder. It's a little harder. Uh, we are going to take a closer look at both the VR headset and at the Acer Spire Seven. Uh, again, you know, for this is a twelve hundred dollar, a fourteen hundred, no, thirteen hundred dollar setup. For a thirteen hundred dollar setup, I get a super competent computer and a VR headset with controllers. I mean, that's that's what like the original HTC Vive cost when it came out just a couple of years ago. So the prices are going down, and maybe it's time for you to finally start developing. Uh, in fact, I heard that there's some three D modeling software, and for me, that's what I want. I, I could design Scully version three with uh, all in VR space. Mm. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, when we come back, Megan, um, you got a little something something there. What is that? Well, this is Scully. If you haven't watched part one, go back and watch it right now. You can find it on YouTube because now we're going to actually make Scully work and recognize you Ooh. as you approach. Oh, yeah. So, Stay away from the candy. <laughs> this is one of the projects that we tried to put together for Halloween. Remember, we had the Mad Science Bubbler. We took a look at some of your decorations. Like, what was it? Dollar Store Dave? Yes, it's Dollar Store uh, Dave. And I see a lot of Dollar Store Dave on Scully, by the way. Uh -huh, um, yeah, I, he was covered in close. glitter. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're going to show you how to assemble a different version of this. People were saying we well, need something a little simpler. Well, I created the simplest version of Scully ever. And also, we're going to take a look at what happened to Mulder. Oh, what yeah. did happen to Mulder? Oh, you're, you're going to see. Know. The truth is out there. It's a bad thing. <laughs> but before we get to Mulder, let's go ahead and take a moment to thank a sponsor of this episode of Know How. And folks, I am excited. It's a brand new sponsor with a brand new product. Now, when I say security camera, you're probably thinking back to some episodes that we've done of Know How, where I showed you how to set up network cameras, maybe connected to a NAS so you can collect footage from all around your property. Maybe. Maybe you even followed my instructions on how to make active areas so you could get alerts when there was motion in areas where there shouldn't be motion. Well, that's all good. I mean, I like the technology. It's very easy to set up. But the problem with any of that technology is that eventually you're going to get a list of false positives. You're going to get a lot of data that you don't need. What you need is not a security camera. You need a security assistant. And that's exactly what you get with Lighthouse. Now, Lighthouse is a way of bringing machine intelligence into your camera. Now, this this actually is footage from a Lighthouse that we had set up here at the Twit TV studios. In fact, that's Burke, yeah, that's our office. That's that's Burke doing his thing, of course, being, being Burke. Well, Lighthouse is more than a security camera. It's an interactive security assistant powered by the same technology that you find in self-driving cars. Now, with 3D sensing, Lighthouse sees your home like you do. Not as a collection of pixels, but as a collection of people and events. A Lighthouse knows the difference between pets and potential threats. Now, traditional security cameras, as I explained, can send a constant stream of annoying alerts when it's just you or your pet walking around, or, or even when the light changes. You don't get that with Lighthouse because it actually learns what your environment should look like. It knows the difference between people, pets, and objects, and it learns who should and should not be there. Now, when you're alerted to a possible security threat, you can sound an alarm, speak through the camera, or call 911 directly from the app. Now, this is me asking the Lighthouse app to show me people. So it's actually going through its catalog and finding all those clips where it found actual people. Not just a, a long list of videos that it's recorded, but it actually is intelligence. I, I could even tell it to warn me when certain things happen. Tell me if you find someone who you don't know, who you don't recognize. I could tell it, well, be, be armed when I'm home and turn yourself off uh, when I'm not, or vice versa. I could also tell it to say to never record video when I'm home in case I'm a, a little paranoid. Now, what I love about Lighthouse is that it is a single pane of glass solution. I talk about all, this all the time in the Enterprise Show. I can get all the data in the world, but if I don't have a solution that's smart enough to know the difference between something that's dangerous and something that's mundane, well, then you're just going to overwhelm me, and eventually I'm going to ignore you. No ignoring with Lighthouse because Lighthouse is smarter. Now, if you have kids and you want to know that they got home on time, you could have Lighthouse warn you if, say, I don't see Michael by 4 p.m. on weekdays. Kids can say hello. They can wave and open up a two-way talk. And if you're an elderly parent, this is, this is what I'm using my Lighthouse for. I could say, 
tell me if you don't see motion by 8 a.m. Or tell me if this doesn't happen or this does happen. That's what I like about Lighthouse. It's like Jarvis for your security camera. Folks, you're gonna love Lighthouse. This is the next generation of security. This is a security assistant. This is a game changer. I'm so happy to have them here at TWIT. Now, pre-orders, unfortunately, are sold out right now. That's how popular the solution is, but Lighthouse will be shipping very soon for public sale. Visit www.light.house slash twit to sign up for 15% off Lighthouse when they ship. And you can get a chance to win your very own Lighthouse plus an entire year of service absolutely free. That's a $399 value. Again, that's www.light.house slash twit. www.light.house slash twit. See site for contest rules and we thank Lighthouse for their support of know-how. Now, Megan, what we need to do now is we need to make sure that Scully has a home. Uh, we, we created this one last week, but we didn't really show you how we did it because there was still a couple of things that we needed to finish up. Mm -hmm. Let's finish it up this week. The okay. first thing we need to do is Scully needs to have his brains dug out. I love to dig out people's brains. <laughs> well, unfortunately, you'll see this. Actually, if you go to the side view, you'll see what I'm talking about. This is all the support material that's left when I 3D print it because I don't want the skull to cave in upon itself. So it puts all this, this, this what we call you know, support material or raft material that allows it to support uh, the, the upper structures. Otherwise, like the top of the skull here would just fall in upon itself. In fact, we have an unfortunate demonstration here. I tried making molders. We had Scully and oh. Mulder. And you'll notice Mulder is a lot bigger, but because of the way I designed it, it kind of didn't print properly, and it took three days to print this thing. What? And the brain, the it skull kinda, is all yeah. broken. Yeah, I, I, and we did this on Patrick Delahanty's printer, and Poor Mulder. Uh, his is going back for repair, because it's just, it's not, yeah. So Mulder is a no-go, but it, it should actually work. I've included the files in the download for this episode. But you need to take Scully, and we need to dig that stuff out. But first, let's let's start with the outside. So you're gonna work on this one, I'm gonna work on this one. I've got a couple of tools to make this a tiny bit easier. Now, uh, what we want is we want to pull away a lot of this material. If you go ahead and go to the uh, the side view, Alex. This, this part's easy, so I just, you know, just rip off all the material and throw it on the floor, because then Burke has to clean it up. And that's it's kind of funny. It's, uh, and then it's like for these, I've got these, this little sharp tool and it allows me to sort of reach in and break it away. Uh, we want to do this all around. And actually on this one, say I've already dug out mm -hmm. most of the inside. The way that I dug it out was I took this. So it's just a set of, uh, of needle nose, long nose pliers. And you just kind of jam it in, grip and start twisting. And most of this material will just come straight out. So here. This is uh, like pumpkin carving. Yeah, here, I'll give you that and you can, you can start debraining your scully. Oh, uh, once we've, we've got this relatively clean, what that will do is it will give us the ability to mount this. We, we have multiple parts of our scully design. Uh, and uh, we've got the skull, we've got the deck, we've got the base, and we've got the LED shelf. So once we've, uh, we've got it debrained, we're gonna be able to start assembling this. Yeah, this is a lot like pumpkin carving. Maybe this, mm -hmm. is, the, this is the new generation's pumpkin Skulls carving. Skulls carving. 3D D crapifying. Yeah. Actually, I don't think I'm supposed to say crap. <laughs> We're a family show, Megan. Uh, yeah, plus there's no pumpkin seeds to uh, roast after this. I could 3D print some pumpkin seeds. Wait, do you eat roasted pumpkin seeds? Yeah. Don't you? I thought that was just someone messing with me. You actually eat those yeah. things? Yeah, my mom used to separate them and then she would put them on a pan and add like some salt and olive oil and roast what? them up. I don't have the patience because you really do have to peel them oh, sorry. away. Is it like sunflower seeds? I mean, kind I'm, of. What? It's, got a, it's got a lot of good vitamins in them. Yeah, that's crunchy. Okay, I never taught you anything. I, well, yeah. I'm, well, now I know that you can eat those things. I, I honestly thought that it was just people trying to make me eat something that was going to taste nasty. No. You can eat this stuff, though. Here, try it. No, no. <laughs> that's it's actually, you know what? I, I always figured that it would it would taste like that pumpkin spice stuff that they keep adding to lattes. And mm. No, that has no pumpkin in it. That's disgusting. Pumpkin, it's, it's pumpkin sugar. spice has no pumpkin in it. My sister is addicted to that stuff, and all it is is sugar, right? It's just more sugar. Mm -hmm. Oh, see? Oh, Scully is starting to look like an actual skull. Now, see, you'll notice the areas that's needed the most are like these overhangs, because those overhangs, if I, since I'm printing from the ground up, there would be nothing to support that, and that would just droop down. You absolutely need the support 
structures on something like this. Most of the designs I create, I try to create in such a way where I won't need a lot of supports just because it's, it's a waste of material and it takes a lot of time to remove it and clean it out. But when you have something what it has to be realistic, like a skull, uh, there's really no choice. You kind of do have to use the uh, supports. How are you doing there? I'm doing good. I, I especially enjoy carving out the eyeballs. <laughs> you know, I'm learning things about you, Megan Maroney. Uh, you eat pumpkin seeds and you like carving out eyeballs. Mm -hmm. This is um, this is eye opening. This uh, this will probably change how much time I spend in the. T Wait, what are we calling it? It's not the producer's room anymore. It's a talent room. Mm -hmm. And oh, now uh, don't don't stab yourself. That okay. would be bad, and it's bad for TV. Okay. Okay. So I've got mine more or less clean. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you continue to clean out your skull. And actually, John, if you could get a trash can over here so we don't end up pushing all the stuff onto the floor, even though it would be funny to make Burke clean it all up, uh, that, would, that would be mean. I kind of like Burke. You know, I don't know I don't know about you, but Burke seems a, like a nice guy. Mm, that depends. That's right. <laughs> uh, we only say this, folks, because we know Burke's listening. All right. So you go ahead and work on that. What I'm going to start to do is I'm going to start to work on the electronics. Now, okay. I have simplified this project as much as possible. I took out the ultrasonic sensor because I was having problems with the ultrasonic sensor last week, and unfortunately, the new and improved ones did not arrive. The issue was when you buy a really cheap ultrasonic sensor, what will happen is over time they deteriorate. Mine had deteriorated to the point where they just weren't giving me honest readings anymore. It would go from zero centimeters up to 187 centimeters, up to 200 centimeters, down to 12 centimeters. And you know, if you don't have a consistent reading, there's nothing I can program that will make that right. Uh, so what we did was we changed Project Scully. Now this was the original shelf. This was the base. And the reason why we created it like that is because we needed the space to put the little ultrasonic sensor. Because I took it out of this version, I was able to make a base that's much, much shorter. I no longer need to put the ultrasonic sensor. I just need a place to put the LEDs and the Arduino. Uh, if you go to the overhead, this, this is what the base looks like when it's assembled. Uh, I try to make my designs as simple as possible. Uh, and again, you, you can get all of the designs straight off the show notes. You don't have to copy any of the stuff down. But when I take off the deck, all you find in here is this is a mounting shelf for the Arduino. So that's where the Arduino is going to go. This right here, this is a mounting shelf for the little LED holder. So this holds the WS2812 ring that lights up the inside of Scully. All I need to do, like you did last week on the breadboard, I need to connect three wires, voltage, ground, and data, to three pins on the Arduino. Voltage, ground, and data. So. This is probably the easiest project we've ever done. There's no need for external power. We don't have to worry about uh, uh, you know, overloading this. This is literally just three wires, load up the code, and Scully should be good to go. Uh, how are you doing with, uh, with debraining? Um, well, I just don't, I don't know the garbage can over here, oh, so uh, here. give me the garbage can. There you go. This is really messy. It is, right? And the, the, the thing is, you'll notice that as if you get a, a better printer, it's really good at printing up support structures. The cheaper printers, sometimes the support structures are really hard to separate from the actual model. Mm. Um, that's, that's a pain. So we're going to go ahead and fire up my soldering iron. I'm going to be using about 375 degrees. I'm using a Rosencore solder. I'm using silicone wire. <laughs> this is important because if I use plastic wire, what will happen is when I start to solder, the insulation starts to melt. Uh, that's no bueno. It just and it doesn't last long. And by the way, that that uh, smoke coming off the plastic that's toxic. Poison. You, yeah, yeah, you don't want to. No. No, especially if your kids are going to be doing this. But if if you uh, want to get your kids into embedded controllers, this is a really good project because it's super easy. I need one length of each color. So I'm taking a little bit of black, a little bit of white, and a little bit of red. Again, black is going to be ground, red is going to be voltage, and white is going to be data. I want the same distance for all three, but I don't want too much because I don't want a lot of wire cluttering up the inside. So I'm going to take about that much and just clip it off. That should be plenty for me to do my project. Let me just make this nice and neat. Your boys, uh, I gave them a breadboard with some Arduinos. Have mm -hmm. they been playing around with it? They've them? been playing a little bit around, about, around with it, yes. They're more involved with the snake. <laughs> no, you know, school, etc. 
they play around with it. It's on their desk, so when they're bored with their homework, that's what they do. <laughs> which, is, which is what you want. I mean, that's ultimately what I've, I've designed Scully for, because people can play with WS2812s. You still have access to the Arduino, so you can change the code. You can download the code and just modify it to make the effects that you want. So the first thing I, I, I've got to do is I've got to tin these. And anytime, anytime I'm playing with wires, I want to pre-tin them so that they'll stick better when I solder them. Uh, well, one of the mistakes that a lot of people make is just soldering bare wire, and what will happen is you'll get like little <coughs> loose threads of, of uh, copper going this way and that. That's, that's not good. It doesn't just look bad, but you could short out really easily. So I'm going to use some strippers. I'm going to strip about, about a quarter inch, or maybe two or three millimeters off of each one of these, both sides. And once I've got both ends uh, uh, tinned, it will make it very easy for me to solder them into the, uh, the WS2812 ring and onto the Arduino. Do you want to try your hand at soldering? Uh, yes. Well, I have, uh, I bought soldering irons for my kids, so I have soldered a little bit and I would love to do more. So, yes. Okay. We're going to show you some super basic stuff. Now, one of the things to remember is always, 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 always heat the object that you want to solder, not the solder itself. You'll see me every once in a while putting a dollop of solder onto the iron, but that's just because I want to transfer heat a bit better, and it does it better when you've got liquid solder. Uh, but let, let, me, let me do one side, and then you can do the other while I go ahead and start prepping the Arduino. So I'm going to take all three of my wires. I'm going to put them into my helping hands, oh. which is just a little vice grip, which, which is a complete mess at the moment. There we go. To my helping hands. And I'm going to do this like so. All right, so I've got my three wires right there. I'm going to clean the tip of my iron. And then I'm going to put a tiny dollop of solder onto the iron so that I get better thermal conductivity. Like that. I just want to heat the wire until it's ready to flow. And then I'm applying the solder to the wire, not to the iron. And there you go. One, two, three. Now, those three ends are now tinned and ready to go. So let me go ahead and strip the other sides, and then I'll let you have a go at it. OK. What did you do over there? You dipped it in some? Right. So this, uh, if you go to the side view, this is actually just, this is my slag pit. So it's, it's like a Brillo pad. Mm. And it allows me to clean all the excess stuff off the, uh, off the iron. Okay. You want your iron to be as clean as possible, because if, if it's not, what will happen is, well, see this. Uh, see how some of it's darkened? That's what happens when you don't clean properly. Yeah, ours I, are very dirty. I am lazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so here you go. Okay. And take that. And here so you just go. tap it up. <laughs> are you uh, nervous? I'll just, I'm going to give you a little bit of that. Okay, and then with your other hand, hold the hold the stream of uh, the string of solder. Okay. So put it yep. to the wire. No, so put the iron to the wire. Heat okay. the wire first. Uh, on the wire itself, not on the insulation. Ugh. I know, I know. Okay. Did I get and it? Almost. You're almost there. Stay on target. Stay on target. A shaky hand. Stay on target. There you go. Wait, what are you? You're so trusting of me. There you go. Okay, now we'll touch with the solder. Oh, oh, did I get you with the solder? No, no. Okay. So uh, what you want to do is you're, you're going to heat the wire until it's hot enough, and then you're going to flow the solder onto the wire. Okay. Okay. Uh, almost. You got it. Did I? Kind of. <laughs> Here, okay, so let me give you a quick one. I should one. never be a surgeon. No, 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 just like this. Okay, so I'm going to touch it, and you're basically pushing up against it. See, I'm pushing up against it so that the, the wire rests on it, and then a little tap. When I see the smoke, I know it's flowed, and I'm good to go. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to clean that off, and you go ahead. Okay. And try. This is just like bullseye womp rats back in your T20. Exactly. Those poor womp rats. Okay, okay I touched try the solder this white first. One. Yeah, there you go. Touch the wire first or the solder? Okay, I'm going to give you a little bit of solder. Okay. Just so that, it, and, and then you're going to push it up against the wire. So have the wire, there you go. And then take this, and you're going to touch it to the wire. Not to the soldering iron, but to the, to the wire itself. What? No, keep the soldering uh, iron. The soldering has to stay on it. There you go. Okay, no, good. Really? Perfect. Really? That's it. Yeah, that's it. Oh. That's, you have tinned that. Okay, go ahead and tin this, this black one now. Tin the black one. Tin the black one. Okay, touch it to the solder. Just a little bit. There you go. And then touch it to the wire, and then touch the solder to the wire. That's it. Oh, there. See, it, yeah, it, it takes it takes a little bit of doing. You have to get used to it. But no, Megan, that's fantastic. Very well done. Uh, Michael in our audience also gave me a nod of approval. Yes, yes. See? I think he's done some soldering. In uh, his probably. Yeah, <laughs> in his in his line of work, I'm saying he 
He's probably done a little bit of it. Now we need to do the same thing for this. This is our WS2812 ring. So these are the individual LEDs that I can control with my Arduino, with my microcontroller. I'm gonna send the values to this and it will light up each individual light the way I want it to light up, which is why Scully can come in multiple colors. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I need to t do the same thing that I did to the wires, but I'm gonna tin the pads instead. Now this, this takes a little bit more doing because you can kind of mess this up. You, you want to apply, if you go to the, uh, the side view here, let's see if I can get this in view, there we go. You want to apply heat to the pad, not to the solder. And I'm gonna be using in, which is my digital in, VCC, which is my five volts, and GND, which is my ground. So I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna touch it to the, the ground pad and I'm gonna wait until it's hot enough to start flowing solder. I don't need much, just that, that tiny little amount. What this will do is it will allow me to, when I want to attach the wire, I can just reflow the solder. So I'll just heat it up till it melts again and then the wire goes in and I'm done. So let's, let me show you how this is gonna work. Let's start with this ground wire. It goes like this. I'm basically gonna take the ground wire, push it against the pad which already has solder on it, I'm gonna remelt it and then let it cool. There oh. you go. See? You have a very steady solder hand. You need a steady hand. Don't touch the sides. <laughs> now, if you have to be of a certain age to know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about, right? Mm -hmm. okay. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you have to go to the internet and look for operation. That's where most of us learn these skills. There you go. So that's my power and this is my data. And by the way, folks, this is, this is real time. So this is what it would actually take you to do this project at home with your kids. Or if you're a big kid, what it would take you to do this project at home. All right, so this is my ring of WS2812s. I've got my ground wire, I've got my power wire, and I've got my data wire. Now what I need to do is I need to snap it into this. This is the little, what I call the LED shelf. Again, this is included in your files, so you don't have to make it. That little cutout, you see that little Pac-Man looking thing? That's where the wires go. So I'm gonna line up that area with that area with that so that the wires don't get pinched. And then this is designed to be really snug. It has to be because I want this LED ring to stay on the shelf. If it slips off the shelf, then it will just rattle around. So that's not gonna go anywhere. And now my wires have a nice place to, to hang out, right? So this, now has to be connected to the Arduino because alone, this doesn't do anything. I need the Arduino to actually push the values. And uh, you wanna open one of those? Sure. By the way, I did bring an extra set. Just in case. So if you wanted to do this with your kids. Oh, yes. Make them do their own work. Mm -hmm. Mom's gonna bring home all the Halloween decorations. I don't think so. No. Dollar store, Dave doesn't do this. I don't well, think they so. saw, Milo saw this. He's like, oh, who 3D printed that? <laughs> And then you say, I did. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what, you, oh, you don't think your mom can make something mm -hmm, like this? Mm -hmm. Now, I don't need any of these pins because uh, this is o these pins are only for, if I'm like gonna use a bunch of breadboard jumpers, I'm actually okay. gonna solder directly to it because once this goes into the enclosure, I should never have to open it again. Right. Uh, I mean, it, by the way, folks, this whole project, if you buy this in bulk, this will cost you about uh, $4, closer to $3. Actually, we have a link there, Alex. Uh, this is, again, a 16 LED WS2812 ring, $3.80 if you buy it alone. I, I get them for closer to two fifty because I buy so many of them. And then we're also using an Arduino, which if you go to that link, is about $3. And if you buy them in bulk, it's closer to $2. So this project is $4 to $7. This is a super, super inexpensive project. Except for the, the $400 3D printer. Well, yes. <laughs> But again, you don't have to buy a 3D printer. Find someone with a 3D printer or go to Shapeways. Shapeways will take the files that I've given you, they'll print them up and they'll send them to you. Then all you have to do is assemble them. Now let's show you how this is gonna work. This is a tiny, tiny, tiny bit more tricky because what we want is we wanna put the wires through these pinholes and then we wanna solder on the other underside. And the reason why we wanna solder on the underside is because this is ultimately gonna fit into this tray. Oh, by the way, we should probably do this now. Mm -hmm. uh, I like this oh, part. Pop, out that. pop this out. Again, this is support that was added so that this wouldn't collapse around the little opening that we needed in the side here. Um, uh, by the way, the iFixit tool is great for this. It helps you to pop out all this stuff with nary a problem. So now I've got 
an opening for my, my Arduino should fit nice and snugly. Oh, I like that. It's really snug. So the Arduino with the mini USB or micro? Yeah, this is mini, mini. Not, not micro, yeah. So mini USB. All right, super simple. My black, do you remember what that is? It's ground. 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 My, even, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. My red is? Duh, no. <laughs> five volts. Uh, power. Yeah, power, and then uh, my... I only remember ground. Uh, okay, well, ground, <laughs> data, and power. So okay. uh, white is my white is going to be my, uh, my data. data. Red is going to be my power, and okay. black is going to be my ground. Uh, in this particular case, my, my code has data coming out of pin 3 of the Arduino, but I can solder this to any pin as long as I remember that okay. and change the code. So let's go ahead and start with 1. I'm going to do the first one, and then why don't you do the second one? <sighs> Okay, so I'm gonna find the ground pin. Let's see, what's, what shot do I have, Alex? There we go. My ground pin is right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this through, Sorry. like so. There we go. Oh, this is unraveling a little bit. Can you move the helping hand a little bit? Where, all the way oh, away? Okay. There you go. I'm gonna push this through the ground pin like that. This is through a hole. Uh, and actually, I can keep pushing it so that it's all the way through. I'm going to push the red one through 5 volt, like this, so that it's all the way through. And I'm going to leave this one, because I, I, I want to do these first two first. So I'm, I'm going to take my helping hands, I'm going to clamp my Arduino in there. I'm going to clamp the lower, the, uh, the wires into the lower arm, so that they don't go anywhere. Mm. And I'm going to pull them back until it's just the wire itself. I don't want any of the insulation because that's just going to get in the way of the bond. There you go. So now I can do my 5 volt power. Uh, and actually I'm doing this backwards but because I want the audience to see. There we go. Let me pull it back a tiny bit more. There we go. So I'm heating up the wire and the socket, not the solder until it's warm enough to do that. I don't need too much. And there you go. A little Whoa. tug, and it's solid. Okay. So let me set up the black one, the ground wire, for you. And it's the same thing. So you go, what you're going to do, you're going to put the tip of the iron right at the junction of the wire, the exposed wire and that little socket. And then you're going to keep touching this. So keep the iron on it, but keep touching this to it until it starts to flow. When it starts okay. melting, it means you've, you've hit the temperature you need. Let me pull this back. So there do I put go. a little bit of solder on the tip first? No, you're, okay. it's, it's already been pre tinned Okay. So okay. I just touch the wire and then keep touching the solder to the wire? Well, touch, so touch, you want to touch the junction between the wire and the socket itself. So touch it with the iron first. Okay. You have to heat it up. And then... There you go. Oh, yeah, almost. And actually, here's a hint. Put the iron on the other side of the wire. Oh. There you go. Oh, 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 careful. You don't want to touch the other components. Uh. Thanks, <laughs> Alex. <laughs> That's not very nice, Alex. How oh, do you, you know when it. it's done? I can't... Is it... Yeah, let me, I'll, I'll clean it up a tiny bit. But yeah, you got it. No, it, when it sticks, okay. you know you're done. So if I pull it, will it stick? Uh, it, or I it's, do it? it's very loose at the moment. So yeah, it'll stay. Uh, surprisingly, you actually got solder in the next socket over. Let me oh. remove that a little bit. Oops. That's okay. That's okay. Just right now, it will just constantly reset. There we go. And we're good. Okay, uh, let me just remove some of the solder that got laid down there. There you go. Okay, that's either going to work or it's going to constantly reset itself. <laughs> so we'll see. It's, good. it's all part of the learning process, Megan. All right, so we've got our, our voltage. We've got our ground. Now we just need our digital. This is our data bin. Do you remember okay. which socket this is supposed to connect to? Um, is it over on this side? Yeah, so digital D three. Okay. So that goes into digital three. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and line this up, hold the wire with the lower right. helping hand so that it doesn't get pulled out of the way when I'm trying to solder it. And then I'm going to withdraw it just enough so that the wire shows. 
and not the insulation. There we go. And then just like this. Okay, I'm gonna watch you. So I'm gonna heat, I put the tip of the iron at the junction between the wire and the socket itself. Okay. And then when it starts heating up, that's it. Uh -huh. That's all. Okay. Okay, now we can test it. We're just gonna do a quick yank. All good. Now, assuming this works, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clip off the excess, because I don't want this stuff mm -hmm. just hanging around. It's if it messy. touches anything else, it might actually cause a short, which oh. would be bad. Yeah. And uh, let me make sure that I think that might be bridged. A little bit. <laughs> That's okay. All right, now what we need to do is we need to load up some code. Uh, Alex, if you go to my computer here, this is the code that we had from last week. I took out the ultrasonic sensing, so it makes it a lot easier. So what you're seeing is data pin is on three, which we've already set that up for. I've got my, uh, my LED types. I've got the number of LEDs, and everything else is, uh, is pretty much standard. I want to go ahead and test this before I install it, because I don't want to install it and then figure out that it's not working properly. So I'm going to plug this in. Nothing will happen, because there's no code on this just yet. But if I did it right, if I go to this screen, oh, good, it's found it, so it knows there's an Arduino. It knows that it's going to be an Arduino Nano, and let's upload it. Now, assuming that I, we didn't just burn this thing out, it's going to compile it, and then it's going to upload. And about three seconds after it's finished its upload, it's going to go ahead and start this up, and it should start the animation patterns. Uploading now, and about five, four, three, two, one. There you go. Ta-da! So this is what's going to be inside of Scully. So when we're done, oh, actually, let's use the one that's kind of dug yeah, out already. Yeah, I did not do a good job. When we're done, that's our, our wonderful oh. glow of the Scully. Nice. Yeah, right? Yes. Okay. Now, next step, we have to have, actually have to assemble this. So you, are you going to be with me for this one? I'm, I'm, I don't know. I, I don't have any place else to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But before we do that, let's go ahead and take another moment to thank a sponsor of this episode of Know How. Now, uh, Megan, you know that I've been on jury duty the last couple of weeks, I know. right? It's been hard. It's been hard because uh, basically I, it's been a nine to five job and then I come home and try to do my twit work. Well, uh, I don't know if you know this, but here in San Francisco, the court system gets no money and the building is incredibly run down. And what happened was the courtroom that I was in, the air conditioner broke. Uh, and you put 300 people into a room meant for 50 mm -hmm with no air movement, and it got really hot, and it got really nasty, and people were getting a little short. So, after the first day, I went home, and I made a little something something. Uh, because, you know, know-how, maker. So I grabbed myself a Joby tripod, which has this little magnetic base. I created this little fan enclosure that's powered by a uh, super big uh, quadcopter battery with this little PWM controller that allowed me to adjust the speed of the fan, and this allowed me to stick it onto my armrest or onto the, char, the, uh, the, the chair in front of me, and now I had my own little air mover. And it was funny because I was wearing my clerics and people kept looking at me like, where did you buy that? I'm like, well, I made it. But you're a priest. <laughs> well, folks, this would only be possible because I have so many of these things around. This is a Joby tripod. This wonderful little piece of technology allows me to take anything that's mountable on a quarter inch mount and attach it to anything. This could be my camera, this could be my lights, this could be the next cool project that I make to keep myself from dying in an overheated uh, courtroom. Could be Scully. It could be Scully, exactly. I could quarter inch mount Scully, which is why we're so happy to have Joby as a sponsor of know-how. Now, you know Joby. In 2006, they revolutionized creativity with the first ever flexible tripod, the Gorillapod. That's what I've got. Now, with over 10 million sold, they've made them even better. They've got brand new designs. The Gorilla Pod's new flexible legs wrap around objects for unlimited angle and precise composition control. They've got a stainless steel reinforced ball head with 90 degrees of tilt, which is perfect for shooting in landscape or portrait mode. They've got their signature ball and socket joints, plus rubberized grip rings, as well as rubberized rings and foot grips that provide stability on even uneven surfaces for crisp, clear photos. Joby lets you mount a variety of devices, including point and shoot, action 360 mirrorless DSLR cameras, lighting, even your own personal fan, and you can mount everything at the angle that you need. That's what Joby is all about. They understand the frustration with the traditional tripods. They know that sometimes you just need to take that action camera and put it 
into a place that's so small with an angle that's so weird. Well, that's what they do. They don't make you work with their tool. They make their tools work with you. Joe B is flexible, stable, and versatile. And here's what they want you to do. They want you, the photographer, the creative professional, to grip it, to wrap it, to stand it, to see the full line at Joby.com. Uh, currently, Joby is transitioning to a new production center and isn't accepting orders online. But you can check back soon, or you can leave your email with them for an update on product availability. Now, once they are accepting orders online, just enter Twit at checkout to receive 15% off your order. Again, that's Joby.com. Joby.com. And soon, you can enter Twit at checkout for 15% off your order. And we thank Joby for their support of Know How. Did right. you uh, did they give you a hard time when you brought that past the um, into the courtroom? Uh, the, the bailiff came over to see because they're really really strict about having electronic devices, uh, and he thought that I was messing around with the phone. But then he saw it and he's like, "Oh, that's a really good idea." And then he goes, "How easy is it for you to make one of these?" <laughs> I gave him and the judge one, so I uh, made three of them. I have one left. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, they were nice guys. They were nice people. And then you know what? I did my civic duty. Three weeks of my civic duty, but I did my civic duty. Mm -hmm. All right, so here's what we want to do. We need to fully assemble a scully. What you're going to do is there are three mounting holes. There's three three millimeter or M3 screw holes on the bottom. They actually match up perfectly to those three holes. So you're going to take the screwdriver and the screws, and you're going to mount scully to the deck, because that's the first part of the process. And while you're doing that, I'm going to work on embedding this, this whole uh, electronics, into the base. So I'm going to get you the screws, okay. which are right here. And this is the driver. I've already pre-threaded these, so it should be nice and easy to put these in. I'm going to give you three of these. It's going to take you a little bit of time. OK, keep me busy. Keep you busy keep us working. So, uh, yeah, the easiest way to do it is to take the deck, put Scully on the other side. Uh, so you want it, you want the Celtic side. Up. Oh. There you go. There you go. And then you're going to put this in like that. So get the first one. Actually, here, let me, let me line up the first one for you make it a little bit easier. So that's the first one. So mostly tighten that one down, and then you can put in the other ones. Okay. Now, while you're doing that, here's what I'm going to do. I need to put this into this base. So the Arduino is just a friction hold. Now, if, if, you've, uh, if you've got a 3D printer that is a little loose in the tolerances, you can use a hot glue gun to, to make sure this stays down. But I have designed this caddy to sort of snap. That shouldn't really go anywhere unless, uh, unless again, you've got a 3D printer that didn't, didn't quite do the job. Uh, I've also used M3 screws for this. So I'm going to be able to take these screws and tighten them onto there. If I could borrow that driver for just a second, like so, one and two. And uh, folks, a really good habit to get in when you're doing this fast prototyping stuff is test often. Always make sure that you're, what you're doing is going to work because it's kind of annoying when you're fast prototyping and you have to disassemble something that you've just created because it's, it's not actually, you know, step four was in the wrong place. So let me tighten this down. There we go, and it's back to you. All right, so this is the LED assembly. This is, uh, is going to be powered entirely off of the USB port. Uh, if I had gone with any more LEDs, so even two more LEDs, I would have to put an independent power supply in this because the Arduino just wouldn't be able to supply enough power. But because I'm only doing 16, that's well within the tolerances for how much that can supply. Now, let's go ahead and plug this in and make sure that the move to the caddy didn't accidentally break anything. And you also need to make sure that there's enough clearance for your, uh, for your cable to actually fit in. I see the light. So the light on the Arduino has actually turned on. There you go. And there you go. So this is just going to go ahead and rotate through the animation patterns that I've given it. Uh, now, you can jump into the code, because I've annotated everything. And you can remove the ones you don't like. If you, if you have a particular animation pattern that you want it to stay on the whole time, I'll actually show that. Go to my computer, Alex. What I can do is right here. This is the list of all the patterns that I'm going to run through. So it's just going to go from one to the next to the next to the next. When it gets to blank, which turns everything dark, it will go back to rainbow. If I want to stay with rainbow, if I want to stay with juggle or BPM or any of these, I can actually remove all the other patterns, and it just does that. 
I kind of like different animation patterns, so that's that's why I did it this way. Me too. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, if you just want this to light up a particular color, I've got other code samples that will show you how to just make it red, or just make it blue, or just make it pulse. Uh, but again, these are kind of built into the fast LED library, which is why I'm using them. How are you doing, Megan? I'm doing pretty good. I got I'm all, almost all screwed, screwed all the way in. Yeah. Now, in the previous version of Scully, the one that uh, you took home, unfortunately, I made those mounting holes a little bit too big, which is why you can there's like a little bit of a play. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, not so much. So that should, there we go. You like it? I like it. I think it's all Let screwed in. What do you think? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, oh, that's nice and tight. All right, so last bit. All I have to do is snap this over that. If I've done this right, then this pattern hole right here should go right over the top of that LED ring. And let me go. And I made this super tight. There we go. And if you give me that, there's two last screws that I have to put on the side here. Although technically I don't need them because the fit is so tight, it would stay on even without the screws. And there you go. So it's gone to the blank pattern. She has it's a little bit of crud here. We oh, guess. yeah. No, I haven't. Yeah, I actually, she still has to clean out the yeah, eyes. Yeah, we got to poke out her eyeballs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> kind of vicious with that, Maroni. <laughs> You're ready to poke out her eyeballs for nothing. Now, uh, again, it's in the blank. Oh, there we go. If you switch back, now it started uh, the, uh, the animation pattern all over. Yeah. I kind of like the stuff in the eyeballs, though. That has a different it look. It does, right? So that's original Scully, this is Scully 2. You'll notice Scully 2 is a lot more simple because it doesn't have the ultrasonic uh, distance sensor. Uh, and actually, I kind of like the lower profile. Uh, this, is, this could be used in more places mm -hmm. than, uh, than you know, say, Scully 1. Right. Yeah. But this one makes you think there's sensors or some kind of camera in there. Right, right. Which there isn't. But Which there isn't right now, but I mean, it's hard. It's, it's wired up. We just have to you know, mm -hmm. make it actually work. Mm -hmm. And that's it, folks. This is, again, a super simple Halloween project, assuming that you have a 3D printer or assuming that you want to go to a place like Shapewise and give them my files and then just have them print and send it to you. And actually, that, that's probably just as fast as printing these up because printing, especially the skull and the deck, because they're so ornate, this whole thing will take you on, I'll say, a Monoprice Maker Select version 2, probably about three and a half to four days to print. If you order from Shapewise, they'll get it to you in three days. Uh, so, believe it or not, this is one of those few projects where if you buy it online, uh, it's faster than you 3D printing, as long as you buy the parts for all the electronics. But you could just buy like a plastic skull at the dollar store or something, yeah. couldn't you, and hollow it out and then stick that Precisely. Arduino in yeah. there? Precisely, uh, yeah. You, you actually had a couple of really nice skulls mm -hmm. from the dollar store, mm -hmm. and you're absolutely right. You could, you could open that up, you could just take the electronics that we just created for Scully and just kind of hot glue it in the bottom. If you don't want to do any of the 3D printing, the 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 project files that we gave you and the code that we gave you still works just fine for uh, illuminating something for Halloween. I don't suggest using an actual human skull. <laughs> I mean, I am going to be living with catacombs. <laughs> Okay, folks, on that morose note, we want to thank you for joining us for this episode of Know How. Now, you don't have to copy anything off the screen. We provided everything from the STL files for all the 3D uh, items all the way down to the code at our show page, which we're going to find at twit.tv slash kh. Now, if you go there, also please remember that you subs can subscribe. Now, Megan, you know this. The best way to support our shows is to subscribe. Mm -hmm. When you subscribe... It means we can continue to bring you content. We can keep giving you all the cool stuff that you want, including 3D skulls. Twit.tv slash cage. Oh, by the way, there's a Control Freak episode I like so much. <laughs> We're kind of weird like that. Yeah, it's for geeks. Mm -hmm. Also, don't forget that you can find us on the social. Specifically, you can find us on Google+. Just go to Google+, look for Know How. It's a very short approval process, but once you're in, you get access to almost 12,000 Kitas. Those are our know-it-alls, people who are on every step of their maker DIY journey. You can ask questions. You can answer questions. You can post pictures of your projects. And maybe we'll show them off here at KnowHow. But that's not the only social place they can find us. Megan, where do they find you? Uh, you can find me at Megan Maroney. Um, and you can also come and see us. Tickets at twit.tv. Yeah, yeah. Michael's here. Michael's He's here. He's from Michigan. And you know what? Hey, Michael, you want a scully? You're, I'm going to give you a scully. Oh, see? see? You, you get a no scully. No one else has a scully. You're taking home a one-of-a-kind type mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, awesome. And you get the scully that was assembled on the show. See? Tickets at twit.tv. Mm -hmm. There you go. Also, uh, you can find me at twitter.com slash PadreSJ. If you follow me, you'll get to see what I'm doing when I'm not in the studio. Uh, you've already given your Twitter address. Where, where else do they see you? I mean, I've, I've heard through the grapevine that uh, you actually work a lot here at Twit TV. What, what, what do they find in your shows? Uh, Tech News Weekly. If you come, you can spend the whole day. Like Michael also came yep. and saw Tech News Weekly. That is also on Thursdays. Uh, we record that at around two-ish Pacific. And iOS Today with Leo. Um, that's every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Pacific. And then this Saturday, I'll be co-hosting the new screensavers with Leo. And we're going to do some amazing things, including cleaning out the filth and gunk in our keyboards. <sighs> and the earwax off of our earbuds. It's gonna be great. Do you, do you, I have a scope that you can put in your ear. Why would I wanna do I that? Know. I don't know, <laughs> Oh, by the way, I, uh, the other day, I, I turned upside down a keyboard I had been using for the last four years. Mm, that's scary, that's don't scarier do that. than any of this. Don't, that was, that was a traumatic experience. It was, don't, seriously, <laughs> gross. Gross, 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 gross. Especially if you eat at your computer, you have no idea what ends up under those caps. It's bad stuff. On, oh, by the way, thanks to everyone here who makes this show possible, especially to, I'm going to say it, he is a damn good TD. He is a very good engineer, Alex Gumpel. Uh, Alex, you know what? When, you, when you're gone, I feel it. You're exceptionally good at this. I know you don't like uh, uh, you know, to get accolades like this, but my friend, thank you very much for all you do for now. Yeah, Alex. whatever. Thank you, Padre. That's Alex. Uh, excuse me, Megan. I have some constructive feedback uh, for your soldering skills. Yes. As, as our viewers of Know How, I'm sure know by now, you were holding it wrong. See, you're supposed to be holding it <laughs> by the hot right, end. Right, right. I was holding it's it. It's not yeah. right unless you smell chicken. When you smell roasting chicken, thank you've, you. You've That's done it right. how a woman solders because we're so strong. <laughs> it's like you think that's bad. You try giving birth to a child. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I can hold the soldering iron any way wow. I want. We're going so off the rails. We better end it now. <laughs> Until next time, I am Father Robert Balasair. And I am Megan Maroney. And now that you know how, go dig out its brain. Yeah.